skin, big bandage. Hey guys, what's up? It is my face story here. Today I'm gonna to talk about social media and how it impacts your mind and how that impacts your skin. I think that a lot of us don't really think about how much time we actually spend on social media. A lot of the times I find myself just opening apps, closing them, opening apps, closing them for literally no reason. That is what urged me this past weekend to do a social media kind of detox or break where I turned off, well, a complete digital detox. I turned off my cell phone and I didn't answer any emails, I didn't take any calls, I didn't do anything on social media. I think it was for like five days and it just felt so good and refreshing and nice to just focus on me and not worry about answering to anyone else. Can disconnecting digitally help your skin or you know, is social media actually impacting you without you realizing it. Do you feel worse when you get off of social media? Do you feel worse scrolling through your feed? If so, you know, it might be time to kind of unfollow a few people that are making you feel like that, or you might need a little bit of a detox, you know? Even a five day detox for me personally <laughs> wasn't even enough because it's just like constant, you know, it's fast paced and everyone's trying to keep up on the rat race, on the likes game, on the numbers game, and I'm just not really about it. Really, social media can kind of throw you into like a whole whirlwind of emotions without you even realizing it. A lot of it is subconscious. And we all know that the mind and your skin is connected. Like from the day you're born, your mind and your skin, like everything develops, everything's connected, and your emotional well-being has an impact on your skin. I talk about this all the time. But but now we know the connection between acne and stress. And stress causes a surge in the hormone cortisol. And so when you're stressed out, you break out. And then when you break out, you stress out. And it's like a really hard to be a vicious cycle. So what if you know you're not really stressed out in your daily life? but you're stressed out in like this hyper reality or you're stressed out in this online life trying to keep up an online appearance or if you're just jealous or <laughs> of other people because they have certain things that you don't have like clear skin or tiny waist or a small nose you could be sabotaging yourself and giving yourself more anxieties than what you realize just by being on social media constantly plugged in and not really taking a time to reflect and ask yourself you know why do I feel this way? Or, you know, if you spend a couple minutes or an hour on social media, however long you spend, check in with yourself afterwards. Did you feel the same way that you felt afterwards that you felt before, you know? So I think that's a really good thing to kind of take away from this because if you feel worse afterwards, then it's obviously time to make some changes. And not all social media is bad. This is not like I hate social media type rant. It's not all bad. I think it depends a lot on who you follow, and what is the purpose of your account. I think, you know, if you're following people that aren't making you feel good, aren't really like a positive light, things like that, then you're gonna feel bad about yourself. And the other part of that is, you know, what is your account? Why are you doing it? Is it to be true to yourself? Or do you have this account just so that you can get likes? You know, are you happy with what you're doing? Or are you trying to keep it up in appearance? So I think there's like a lot of different factors that really play into it. The first one I really wanna talk about is kind of body image and other distortions that can happen. It's not just body image, face image, um, but with Photoshop, angles, filters, all those sorts of things, it kind of starts to blur the line between what is real and what is not. And this can go for anything, perfect house, perfect food, perfect kitchen, perfect closets, perfect bodies, perfect faces. And I think this image of perfection that we're always constantly seeing can make you feel less than, especially when you're comparing just like your average daily life to someone else's highlight reels that they're showing. You know, that picture isn't real life. They probably took that picture at least 50 times to get the exact right angle and filter and all that stuff. And I think with this, you can start to feel resentful and maybe even shaming yourself. Like, why don't I have these things? You know, like I used to do that sometimes with people who had really good skin. And you can even start to view your own life through a distorted lens and start believing that physical features on yourself aren't good enough. And this is kind of where the body image distortion comes in. So I think that this happens when long mindless hours are spent on social media and you're not really taking time to check in with yourself. If you have feelings of self-consciousness, 
I think that it actually kind of amplifies them and makes you feel worse. So just be aware of that. I feel like it's especially true with faces, like with facial features. Right now makeup is the hot thing, so it's about having like the smoothest skin, the best cat eye, the longest lashes, the biggest lips. I feel like right now it's really about beauty and it's so hard, you know, to tell what's real and what's not. I mean, obviously we know a lot of the stuff is fake, but if we don't see behind the scenes and we don't see what's going into it, how are we ever supposed to believe or know that it's fake? You know what I mean? It's like, I gotta see the proof. I think that these tools that, you know, shrink your nose or make your eyes bigger or do whatever, um, I think that they are really toxic. And I think as someone who suffers with severe cystic acne, I mean, it's good now, but who knows in a month. Um, I think that this flawless airbrush skin can have a really negative impact on your psyche, even if we know that it's fake. And I think we become jealous again of these like flawless photos because we're just comparing ourselves constantly. You know, I wish I had this skin. And especially again, if you're spending long mindless hours and you don't even know why you're on it, like maybe you're bored or something. I feel like that's most of the time I'm on social media is like, I'm bored, I wanna post something. I think that just isn't good because you start to kind of drag yourself down and pull yourself down. Again, if this is something that you do struggle with, it is really good to just take like a little break and also check in with yourself how you're feeling after you've been on social media. Also, also, I mean, I've said this a million times. You guys know this stuff isn't real. It's not real. It's really not real. Get off. If you get off your phone, turn it off for just like three, four days. I swear, everything will still be there. Everyone will still be there. Everything will still be fine. Um, and it'll just give you time to kind of self-reflect and relax and think about what you want. Um, I think it's just really good experience that everyone should have and... Dude. And one reason I say like these things are fake, I'm not saying like beauty industry is fake or like anything like that. I'm talking about Photoshop, I'm talking about Facetune, I'm talking about editing. I just think it's really toxic and that it, especially like younger girls are looking at this and they're going to think this is beauty. This is what I have to look like to be beautiful and that's not true at all. You can look like this, <laughs> you can look like a mess, you can look great. You are beautiful based on your soul and who you are, not stupid stuff like that. One good example I have of this is I followed this girl really long time on Instagram and I was always jealous of her skin. I was like, oh my God, I want her to drop her skincare routine because it was like flawless and like her makeup was so great all the time and she was just so pretty. And then one day she stopped using filters, which was really cool. And she was like, F this, this is my skin. This is what my makeup looks like. I'm gonna be real from now on. I hate this. And she had severe cystic acne. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy because this whole time I was jealous of her and she had acne. Obviously I still follow her and I, it's about more than that, but it just goes to show that you never really know what's going on behind the scenes. Number two, I thought this was really interesting. Selfies can impact your psyche. They can even have a positive impact or they can have a negative impact. So they will empower you or they will create a sense of... <sighs> There go. So selfies will empower you or they will create a sense of false social interaction. And when this social in <laughs> So when you replace likes with actual social interaction, this will have a negative impact on your psyche. We as people need to interact with people. We need to communicate. And as you know, our mental well-being and our health and our skin, everything's connected. So when you're stressed or anxious or whatever, it's going to show in the form of a pimple. And when you're not getting that social interaction with people, you're going to become more stressed and anxious in real life situations when you're around people. So you cannot replace real life interaction with likes and comments, guys, okay? Another topic I want to talk about, <laughs> social media. This is kind of ranty, but I mean, I feel like it's all very true, especially now. Validation through likes. Feeling like you have to reach a certain number of likes on Instagram. I know certain people who will delete a post and then repost it until it gets X amount of likes, which I just think is kind of ridiculous. Post something if you want, if you like it, if you feel like you have something important to say, but playing the numbers game, trying to see how many likes you can get, trying to see how many people like your photo, validation through likes 
is just going to be really stressful and really exhausting and kind of run you into the ground. And again, when you are stressed and exhausted and trying to find validation or acceptance through likes, you're gonna break out because it's not good. It's not good for your mental, it's not good for your skin. And again, I just wanna to touch on this. Social media is not all bad. It can be great. It just really depends on who you follow and who you're letting influence you and shape your ideas and opinions. Last thing I want to talk about is, is trying to keep up an image. And I think this goes more for people who edit their photos and Photoshop and do all that stuff. But trying to keep up an image or a false persona or anything like that, it's just gonna fail. It's gonna be exhausting. And then eventually you're gonna realize, hey, I can't do this anymore. So, you know, if you wanna Photoshop or edit your photos, do it. If you don't, do it but stay true to you and whatever like your thing is about, just stay true to yourself and make sure that you're not trying to be like anyone else. It's okay to take inspiration from other people, but just make sure that you are yourself and don't get lost along the way. And I think another thing about that is don't feel fo forced to post. I know that some people post every single day, I could never do that. Some people post, you know, a couple times a week. I'm more like that. And some people don't post for months or some people don't post at all. It's completely up to you. Don't feel like you have to post or even have to be on social media at all. You know, before I had my face story, I wasn't really on social media that much, but I feel like this is an important message to get out there. And that's why I am, because it's important to share things like this. Just know that not everyone needs to be aware of, you know, if you're walking your dog or if you went bowling, or if you did this or that. I think it's important to kind of save some of those memories for yourself and hold on to things like that, those little moments. Not everyone needs to know everything about your life. Um, but I think that mentally you just have to do whatever feels right for you. Like I know for me personally, I can't really be on social media that much anymore. I feel like a lot of it is just like negative. Like I just want people to be nice. Can we all just be nice? Come on. So I don't know. I feel like the most I can do right now is maybe like two posts a week, sometimes three, but. I usually just post, I'll reply within the first couple, 20, 30 minutes, and then I get out because after that, I feel like it just goes south. So take some time to get off your device. If it is making you feel like this, if it is, you know, the only way to tell is to get off of it for a while and see if you feel better. Unplug from social media, you know, if you can't do it because your job, try to do it for at least like a day or an afternoon or something if you can you know, if it's not your job, try to do it for a couple days. Just take a break, take time to check in with yourself, get rebalanced, feel grounded, see how you're feeling and not worry about other people. You know, if you can't do either of those, you can at least delete your app for a little bit of time and then re-download it later just so that you're not on it. Or you can install a tracking device on your phone that lets you know how much time you're spending on each app just so that you're aware, hey, uh, I'm spending two hours on Instagram. That could have been time doing the dishes, doing laundry, that could have been time going on a walk, you know what I mean? Like doing other stuff. So it might make you realize, bring things into perspective. I could be doing fun stuff that I wanna do instead of watching other people do fun stuff that I wanna do. I really think that this does work. I'm going to try to start doing one at least once a month, probably every other weekend is more realistic. If I don't have any like prior obligations or anything to do with work, I will probably do it every other weekend. But you will feel less stressed, more relaxed, more zen. Your skin will clear up, <laughs> it will be great. I just think that it's really surprising what it can do when you know, you're know you not focused on so many different things at once and you're living life kind of in the moment and just taking time to really appreciate the little things that happen every day. <laughs> Reserve those little moments for yourself and enjoy your life fully without any distractions, you guys, okay? I guess that's all I got. That's it, that's all I got. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe to this video. Hopefully this was interesting to listen to. I know a couple of videos ago, I talked about kind of my stress acne connection and I think this is one thing also that can stress some people out. Um, again, leading to acne. So, you know, if this is something that stresses you out, try a digital detox. Yes, yes, yes. All right, you guys, that's all I got. And I will talk to you next time.